Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is Proving the Laws of Logarithms. So up until this point, we've actually been using these laws of logarithms. There's three primary ultra uh, important rules of logarithms, laws of logarithms. We've been using them to solve logarithmic equations and simplify expressions, but I never proved them to you. And I wanna take a minute to prove them to you because I don't like telling you, hey, this is true, trust me. I, in general, I don't like to. You probably could skip this section if you want to, but I think it's probably a good idea that you watch it just so you can know where they come from and also because it's a good exercise in working and manipulating logarithms so you get your skills uh, uh, kind of like you get your skills sharpened as well. So at the end of this, I really like you to prove them all yourself. Even after you've seen me do it, there's a lot of use in that. So we're gonna prove three laws of logarithms here. The first one we're gonna prove is the following. We're gonna prove uh, the one that we use all the time. Well, we use all of these, but this one we'll probably use the most. Logarithm base B of the product M times N. And we now know, because we've been using this so much, that that's the same thing as log base B of M plus log base b of n. So why is it that when you have two things multiplied in, in the logarithm operating on it, why does that become the addition of two logarithms? It's almost like multiplication, when you're dealing with logarithms, you take the log of multiplication, it kind of gets transformed into addition of logarithms. So the multiplication operation becomes addition which is very useful for more advanced math when we're trying to simplify things. Sometimes multiplying things gets tricky and dicey. You can change it to addition if you just take the logarithm of the thing. So we're trying to prove this thing here. Uh, also, one more thing I'm gonna say, probably in the beginning you might say, oh, that proof was neat, but I never would have thought of that. That's okay. None of us think of this stuff to begin with, right? You have to see it, right? As long as you understand what I'm doing, that's all I care about. I don't expect you to know how to prove this. I don't expect you to feel you know, like you should already know how to do this. I just want you to follow it. That's all I want you to do so that you can sharpen your skills. All right, so in order to do this, we know we wanna add these guys together. So to make things easier, let's let the following things be true. Let's let some new variable x equal the log base b of m, and let's let a new variable y be log base b of n. You might say, why am I introducing new variables? Well, that happens all the time in proofs. The proof is like, it's like a blank canvas for you to paint on. You can paint anything, I, I can paint what I want. I can paint Jupiter or Saturn, I can paint cows or chickens. It's whatever I wanna do. In the proof, I can do what I want as long as it's mathematically legal. So I'm just gonna let the variable x equal to this and this equal to this, that's fine. The rest of it, I'm gonna try to logically connect the dots and make this thing be true, okay? But if I let these things true, then the following things are true because this is a logarithm, then I then know because of this first line, b to the power of x is n equal to m. b to the power of x is m. That's a definition of a logarithm. And also, b to the power of y is equal to n. So because of what I let these variables equal, then these variables are equal. You might say, this is not at all looking like that. That's fine. That's what I said. You probably, you know, unless you're a math, you know, guru, you probably wouldn't know to do this. I mean, none of us would. But as long as you can follow what I'm doing, that's all I care about. All right, then, or I should say thus, you use words like thus in a proof. If I let this true, then this become is true because of the definition of a logarithm, then I know I wanna multiply these things together, m times n, okay? But now I know what m and n are. They came from these definitions. You see, now I have equations for what m and n are. So then m times n is this times this, which means that's b to the x times b to the y. You see, because I know what m and n are, it, those things multiply together. But because these have the same base and different exponents, I can then say that this is b to the power of x plus y, because I can add these exponents. Anytime I have the same base, I can take uh, uh, those exponents there. I can, I can add those exponents. Now, ultimately, I have m times n, and I'm trying to take the logarithm of that, and I wanna see what it equals. Now I have an expression for what m times n actually is. So in order to to figure out if this is gonna work out, I'm gonna take logarithm of both sides. So I'll take log of base b, both sides. Because I can do anything I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm gonna work with this one. I'm gonna say log base b of m times n is equal to, I'm gonna to have to take the log of this, log 
base b of b to the power of x plus y. Now this b to the power of x plus y, this is what the logarithm is operating on. But remember, we talked about 90 million times about the idea that a logarithm with a base b is the inverse function of an exponential with a base b. They're inverses. So when they operate on each other, they annihilate each other. That is what the definition of the inverse does. The inverse function undoes what the parent function or what the other function did in the first place. So since we have an exponential here, it raised to the power, b to the power of this, but the logarithm undoes that. So on the right hand side, the logarithm cancels with the base b and all I have left is x plus y. On the left hand side, I have the logarithm base b of m times n. So you might say, great, but I don't care about x plus y. But then you remember, wait a minute, I defined what x and y were up here. This x and y are the same ones that are rippling through the problem statement. So then you know that the logarithm base b of m times n is equal to x, but x is the logarithm base b of m. Log base b of m. There's a plus sign here, y. y is log base b of n. And if you look back and compare these things, these are exactly the same thing. All right, because log base b of the product becomes the, the logarithm of the first one plus the logarithm of the second one. That's exactly what we set out to prove. Do I expect that you would have known how to do that? No, most teachers are not gonna tell you prove the first law of logarithms, but what does it do? It allows you to understand how to get this from the definition. That's a, a property of logarithms. When you multiply them, you add exponents. When I take the log of both sides, the annihilation that happens here, that's a property of logarithms. So in the process of learning how to prove these things, you actually sharpen your skills with dealing with logs. That's really all I care about in this lesson. Okay, um, let's go ahead and prove the, uh, the uh, one about exponents next. So we're gonna prove log base b of m to the power of k, some number to the power of k. And we're, we know that that's equal from our laws of logarithms to k log b of m, like that, okay? k log b, uh, base b of the number m. So we basically we can take an exponent, we can bring it out in front of the logarithm. That's all this is telling us. How do we prove that? So we need to do, we're gonna do the similar kinds of assumptions, okay? We're gonna have to let some things happen. Okay, in this case, we're gonna let we're gonna let x equal to log b of n, okay? Now, we could let y equal to log b of n, but you see, in this property of logs, there is no n anywhere else, so we don't really need to define that. Here we had an m and an n, so we had to kind of have a term for each one of them, but here there is no n anywhere, so there's no reason to really do that. But from this single definition here, something pops out. The same exact thing as before, b to the power of x is equal to m. So, so far it's just a rewrite of what we did uh, on the other board. But we have a conclusion that we can draw here. I should say thus, right? Ultimately, what do I want? I want m to the power of k, okay? m to the power of k. So this thing, m to some power of k is what's on this side, b to the x, raised to the sum power of k. All I've done is I said, hey, this gives me a definition for what m is. I wanna raise it to a power because that's what's in my proof. So I raise it to a power, so I have to raise this side to the power because that's what it's equal to. But this means that m to the power of k is uh, b to the, uh, how do I wanna write it, kx. Because this is an exponent raised to an exponent, so I'm gonna multiply those things together. All right? And what did we do in the last uh, thing? Once we had it all kind of written out like this, we wanted to get m times n to, to match our problem statement. Here we have m to the power of k to match what's in our proof. So now we want to take log of both sides. So we'll take the logarithm. Uh, we'll take a base b logarithm of m to the power of k. Logarithm, base b of what's on the right-hand side, b to the power of kx, like this. But then you know that on the right-hand side, you're gonna get the same annihilation here. You have a log of an exponent. Those two things are gonna cancel, just like we had a log of an exponential here. We have a log of an exponential here. On the right-hand side, all you're gonna have is k times x. On the left-hand side, you're gonna have log base b of m to the power of k. And you have k times x, and you say, well, wait a minute, I know what x is. x was log base b of m. So you're gonna have log base b of m to the power of k, 
is k multiplied by x, but I know what that is. It's log base b of m. You see, you take the logarithm of something with an exponent, you can just take that exponent right out front and then multiply by the log of, of, that, of that base there. So that is the proof of the uh, one of the three laws of logarithms, the one that deals with exponents. Now, the one that I say for last is the one that looks kind of like this. Remember, there's one that talks about multiplying things becomes addition of logs, and then there's another one that talks about division of things becomes subtraction of logs. So our last one that we're going to do, and that's, this will be the last thing we'll prove in this lesson, is we want to prove, let me flip my page here, just to make sure I don't uh, mess anything up. Let's prove this last one. Prove the following thing. Log base b of the division m over n is equal to log base b of m minus sign log base b of n. So I want to do the subtraction there. So ultimately this uh, proof is going to be very, very similar to what we did before. But let me show you um, how we're going to get there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to recognize that this statement right here is really the same as log base b of m multiplied by 1 over n, right? Multiply by 1 over n. That's how you get a division here. You multiply by 1 over n. And since we know what happens when we multiply things, we can use a similar proof to go on. In fact, we could even use that thing. We could just substitute in and use it, but that's no fun. Let's do it, let's do it the real way. Let's, let, let's, let's do it the right way. Let's let the following things happen. Let's say, let's let x equal to the log base b of something called m, and we'll let y equal log base b of something called uh, 1 over n. 1 over n, like this. Why am I doing that? Because I know I'm going to need an m, and I know I'm going to need a 1 over n. It's different than the other one, but they were just multiplied together. I'm going to need some fraction with an m on the bottom here. <clears throat> okay, so we'll do the same thing again. Then the following things are true. b to the power of x is m. And then from this one, b to the power of y is 1 over n. So we're going to need those. All right, now ultimately what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to form the product of these things so I can take the logarithm, right? So what I'm going to have is m times 1 over n because I'm trying to make m over n is m over n. But I know what these things are equal to. It's b to the x times b to the y, because that's m and that's 1 over n, okay? But what is this? b to the x plus y. So what I figured out is m over n is exactly the same thing as b to the x plus y. So I'm going to take and write that down separately. m over n is b to the x plus y. And now I want to take the logarithm of both sides. Why? Because I want the logarithm of this quotient, of this division. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to take the logarithm of that. So I had to kind of do all of this to get to where I had an expression for this. And so I'll take the logarithm of both sides. So it has to be a base b logarithm. Base b of m over n equals log base b of b to the x plus y. All of this is wrapped up inside that logarithm. Now I have the same thing happening on the right. The logarithm of an exponential annihilate each other. All I'm going to have on the right hand side is uh, x plus y. On the left hand side I'll have log base b m over n, like this. All right, so what am I going to have next? I know what x and y are, so let's substitute for that. Log base b m over n is equal to x plus y, but I know what x and y are. x is log, uh, base b log of m, log base b of m, and then the y is this guy, log base b, 1 over n. So it's plus sign from this, log uh, base b, 1 over n. Ah, it's hard to read, I'm sorry about that. This is a capital N right here, like this. So x plus y, so I'm just plugging what I have. Now you think, well this isn't quite right. This is a plus sign, this is a minus sign, it's not quite right, but we're gonna get there. How are we gonna get there? Let's go, hmm. Well if you think about it, let me go over here. Let me just write a note over here. This is the same thing as the logarithm, base b of n to the minus one. How do I know that? Because one over n is the same thing 
as n to the minus 1. So this is an exponent, so this exponent can come out in front here. So then I have log base b of m over n equals log base b of m. And because of this, the exponent could come down. It's going to be a minus sign log, and then you have an n right here. And this is exactly what we're trying to prove. The log of the division of n, m divided by n, is the log of m minus the log of n. It's exactly what we have right here. It all comes from this little exponent, and it comes from having to define things this way so I can make the product of m and n. So, or the division of m divided by n. Do I expect you to know this? No, of course not. The first time you see this, nobody knows how to do this stuff. I all, all I care about is that you can follow through. So that for, it serves two purposes. It sharpens your skills so that you know uh, where things come from. I mean, it, it, you know how to use these laws of logarithms to, in order to make logical conclusions. And it also shows you that these laws of logarithms don't just come from the sky. They come from logical progression of thought. We start from here, we let this equal to this. Notice how nobody, I don't wanna say nobody on this earth, there's some pretty brilliant math guys out there, but not very many people can look at this and say, oh yeah, I know how to prove that, no problem. I can see all the steps. Almost nobody can do that. But what we can say is if we let this equal to this and this equal to this, then this must be true. Then if we, if we multiply this and this, it must be this times this. And then we just ripple through. Every little step is an incremental uh, step towards the finish line. That's all I care that you understand. So make sure you understand this. If you want to, grab a sheet of paper and, and prove these yourself. It definitely can't hurt you. And then follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to start to learn more about the applications of logarithms and exponentials in math.